and this is a continuation of my wild edibles series. It's still spring here in Vermont, uh, and this is the month of April, which is when you begin to see the trout lily leaves come up from beneath the, uh, the brown, flattened winter leaves. They are one of the first spring green uh, leaves you see emerge in the northern forests. The uh, wild leek, some of the wild leeks, the stalk itself is that brownish reddish color and then it comes up into a molted colored leaf, bright green and also resembling the same kind of brownish red, sometimes purplish spots on the leaf. Very waxy, but on the bottom side you'll notice there are no spots. It's smooth green. And in April, you'll notice this one here is in bloom. You've got your leaves here coming up and a single stalk. And the stalk is a brownish red color and it has an upside down hanging flower. This is also called the dog toothed violet. Trout lily and dog toothed violet are the same thing. A brilliant yellow flower. Absolutely gorgeous. They call it the trout lily because the, the molted pattern on the leaves resembles the side of a rainbow trout. Now the leaves themselves are edible right off the plant. Uh, some people refer to them as being a little spicy. Um, but you can also steam the leaves for about five minutes to enhance the flavor. Now, you don't want to eat too many of these. So, uh, like if you were eating, uh, you know, a couple bowls full of these a day, uh, they can be slightly emetic, which means um, uh, they, they can definitely make you uh, vomit if you eat too many of them. Um, they're not unhealthy for you. They're just kind of harsh on the stomach if you eat a lot of them. Um, you know, it'd be like uh, trying to drink too much uh, plain lemon juice or vinegar. The root of the trout lily are also edible, okay? You have to boil them um, for uh, about 10 minutes, uh, kind of like a potato. Uh, they're really good, they're uh, kind of sweet and starchy. Um, but they're also uh, very deep, so you have to be really careful when you're digging for them with a, like a digging stick. Uh, they're much deeper than the uh, wild leek roots. And uh, you don't want to dig too close to the stem because you'll snap the, um, the plant off, the leaf, and uh, it could make it kind of tough to find the, uh, the bulbs. So uh, more of a spaded digging stick works really well for these. And as you can see here, so you have your leaf molted on the back side, smooth green. You've got your stalk. Now this is the part here that's out of the ground. You see the brownish red stalk. Once you get below the dirt, it turns white. And then as you go down in to the dirt, if I clean this off a little bit, you'll see you have a white bulb with kind of a brownish, brownish uh, papery uh, sheath on the outside here. And then you've got these uh, long roots and tendrils coming out. Now these roots spread and put up new plants. Okay, so this is a very uh, mass spreading plant. Don't harvest these unless they are plentiful. Okay, because obviously if you're taking the bulb, you are killing the plant. However, here in Vermont, the trout lily grows profusely all over the place. And so it's very difficult to find just one or two plants. Normally you find mats and mats of them. Another interesting thing about the trout lily, <clears throat> excuse me, it's definitely a spring plant. By the time the end of June comes around, you won't even find any more of these leaves. They're completely gone. All right, so they are a short-lived plant, but a wonderful wild edible in the spring. Just don't eat too many of them at one time. Space it out a little bit. Ways of the Wild Institute here in Vermont. And this little clip was on the trout lily. If you have any questions, you can visit my website, waysofthewildinstitute.com. Come visit us for workshops. We've got plenty of them. Stay tuned for the next Wild Edibles video, which will be coming soon, and most likely be on the toothwort. Lula Mollison, be well and happy.